Welcome back to Running on Pixie Dust. I am your host, Annika Hudak. Follow me on socials at Annika Hudak or my Instagram where I focus like the daily story posting at Annika's paintbrush. It's season two of Running on Pixie Dust. There's been a little bit of a hiatus since I last posted. <laughs> I literally, I looked through my notes and I still had episode 23, which is what this is. Um, and I thought I had posted it and then I went back and looked and I was like, oh my God, I never even recorded this episode. So I still had all these notes back from August and I have been intending on posting and it just didn't happen. But you know, it's, it's okay. We are, like I said, in season two of Dumpy Training, and that is the Dopey to Dumbo Challenge, if you weren't already aware. Check out episode zero for my full story of wanting to complete the Dopey Challenge at the Run Disney Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend. That's a mouthful, but I, I've learned so much throughout this process and now doing this for around two and adding in the Dumbo challenge over at Disneyland has just taken it to a whole nother level. So I am, I'm so stoked. Disclaimer, I am not a coach. I am not affiliated with anyone but myself. I'm just sharing my personal experiences and opinions for fun, literally just for fun. And I just love talking about running. So here we are. Welcome to episode 23. I missed you. Oh, I missed you guys so much. Like, even though it's just me talking to myself, like, I I missed it. Like, I, there's so much to catch up on. We are going to dive into all of it. Some of it's running related. Some of it's not running related. And then we get back into the running related. So <laughs> don't worry. But I know we're getting up there in training runs. We've got the longer runs. I know on the Galloway plan happening and there's wine and dine coming up here at Disney World and there's things moving and shaking and time is flying, literally flying. So let's get into it. I think I'll kind of give you my updates through my highs and lows and then we can continue on. So I, I'm so excited to catch up. It's unreal. Like I, I've i made little notes since my last episode basically and I have wanted to add them into the podcast updates. So now, now we've got a million updates to catch up on. So I'm kind of glad I did that like as I went to to in real time I guess note down the updates so then now it's easier to look back and like reflect and summarize. You know what I mean? But Starting off with my highs, we've got spooky season. It is Halloween time. I mean, for me, it's been Halloween since July 5th. So thanks everyone for catching up. Uh, here in Orlando, Florida, in Mickey Land, Halloween starts in August. <laughs> and then in the rest of the normal parts of the world, I think it starts uh, more fall time, like end of September, which is now. And I think that's a more respectable Halloween time for them. You know, not for me. I, again, live for spooky season. It's my favorite season. I love Halloween. So that's that. I, of course, got my frequent fear pass for Halloween Horror Nights, and I finally got to go. I missed the first two opening weekends. I was so depressed. <laughs> but I mean, it was for a good reason. I was traveling and having a great vacation. So I, I wasn't missing out too much. And then to be honest, I saw that it stormed opening night and I was like, all right, I don't feel as bad at not not being there, <laughs> which which helped helped me selfishly, honestly. So I did attend Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party. That was so fun. I went to the second Halloween party in August because again, Disney World starts Halloween early and I'm all for it. So of course I have to go to one of the early Halloween parties. It's it's so fun. Like I'm I always have a great time at Mickey's Not So Scary. So I I enjoy going back. I think the entertainment is incredible. I think the chance to just dress up early on in spooky season is very fun for someone like me who is obsessed with Halloween and it just kind of 
fills in the the spooky cheer, if you will, um, and you know makes it acceptable for me to say Happy Halloween in August. So I love that. Uh, I <laughs> I went pretty crazy for my costume this year. If you follow me on Instagram, then you might remember a green post popping up on your feed and even a few TikToks. And I think I like shared a TikTok or two to my Instagram account as well. But me and Amanda went as Gamora and Star-Lord and it was so iconic. Like I really wanted to be Gamora, but I was, I talked myself out of it kind of early on when I was still thinking about outfits and just trying to think of like being Gamora in the Florida heat is, is not an ideal situation, but you know, I was like, I'm, I'm itching to do it. I think it would be so fun. And so I looked up a few tutorials on TikTok for like Gamora makeup and like bought all of the things that they used and I used clothes I already had like a like a sweat wiki kind of like a sports bra tank top and then I already had like leather looking leggings except they were super thin and super comfortable and breathable like they weren't thick and warm at all so I I felt good about wearing this outfit even though it was pants in Florida (laughs) and uh, I just already had like black combat boots and like a little belt bag for just Gamora vibes I did add in the wig because Gamora's hair is iconic I me and Amanda have gone through the hair spray dye when we were in Phineas and Ferb a few years back and that was atrocious it got all over our clothes we needed like three cans for the amount of hair we had and the cans were so small and so that was just a wreck I remember showering that out and it like dying the tub so that was like I did not want to go through that again so I was like I'm gonna power through it with a wig and it's gonna be fine and it was like I it took me a while to get all the green on my body <laughs> because I had to like layer it and that was that was a time but I think I did pretty okay I did I did pretty okay I think and I remember walking into Magic Kingdom and the cast member saying to me like oh your costume is so good but like make sure you don't take pictures with people because we like don't want to confuse real characters <laughs> with your costume I died at that I was like yes I've made it to the point where my costume is too good love 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 so I I I I had a huge ego boost from that to be honest so that was great the party was fantastic we saw boo to you we saw the hocus pocus show the Halloween fireworks unmatched I just love I it took me like a week to get all the green off of my skin I think (laughs) because like that night I think I got home at like 1 1 a.m and I had to like I used makeup wipes to like wipe all the green off as much as I could first and then I used like oil cleansers and exfoliating like uh makeup remover towels to like scrub it off the rest of my arms my backpack was green my car was green like everything was just green for a while And so that took some recovery and cleanup and my elbows, like it wouldn't come off of my elbows. And so my elbows were still green for like multiple days after that, (laughs) but it's fine. It was worth it. We got, we got sick pics. We got fun videos. I, I was such on a green vibe, loved it. Got so many compliments. It was a good time. A good time. I, I, do you have an Oogie Boogie Bash ticket as well? I'll be going next month and I'm so stoked. I don't know what to wear for that though. I'm definitely not pulling a green full makeup vibe again as like fun as that would be because I love just like full sending it and like commit to the bit but we're traveling this time. I can't just like go from my home and then come back home. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit more difficult and I think I'm going to go a little bit more lazy which will still be fun okay I had all of my fun trips we're still in my highs sorry there's I told you there's a lot to catch up on and we we can't leave anything out so moving on my trips okay so I had like a west a, a, a westward travel extravaganza and I kind of stacked all of my trips on top of each other so my first trip was we went to Alani in 
Hawaii on the island of Oahu and to celebrate my mom's birthday. And I had some friends come with me. We had such a good time. That was so fun. However, the start of this travel trip, me getting to Hawaii, was a fiasco. And again, if you follow me on Instagram and watch my stories of me traveling, you would see that I literally gave you a play-by-play of how awful it was on my American Airlines flight trying to get to Honolulu. Like, I I think I literally... um, what's the little thing called on your page I put the little what is that thing called why can't I remember it's called like when you save your stories on your page oh my god why can I not think of the word but you know on on your Instagram profile the little circles of like stories that you save the word just completely fell out of my head okay hope you know what I'm talking about uh I have my whole whole play-by-play all my stories saved under four Pringles. If you know, you know. My flight was so delayed and so wild. And I arrived safely. I arrived safely to my destination on the day I was supposed to get there. So I know, I know. I'm trying not to whine too hard, but like, I'm gonna. <laughs> if there's one thing I'm gonna do, it's gonna be complaining. I love complaining. But just know that I'm aware that it could have been much worse and the people, the people did what they could. So it's, it's all good. It's all good. We made it there safely. It's fine. That sucks. Um, I, we got diverted to LAX and we weren't supposed to, we were supposed to fly from Phoenix to Honolulu after I'd already flown from Orlando to Phoenix and then it was a whole thing. I was starving. They didn't have any food. Um, on the final leg to Honolulu, then when we finally took off from LAX after being delayed seven hours, five of which were spent on the plane, on the tarmac, I was so, like my nervous system was just shot. I was starving, dehydrated, upset, angry, exhausted. I had been traveling from Orlando since 5 a.m. Eastern time. I got into Honolulu 9 p.m. like Hawaiian standard time. So, and that's six hours behind. So, uh, if you think, uh, Eastern time. So if you think about that, do the math. It was, it was an interesting time, but in, in Hawaii, once I finally made it to Ohlone, we had the best time. It was beautiful weather. It was just a great experience. I couldn't have asked for like a better time. I think we spent a lot of time lounging at the resort. The resort is beautiful. I love Alani. It's the Disney resort on Hawaii. And I had been before. I think everyone had been before. And so it was no one's first time, but it was still as magical as the first time, I think. So great experience. We did go into Waikiki. I did get another tattoo. Wow, a tattoo on a trip never ever happened before. It always happens. Um, so <laughs> I'm at tattoo number 10 now. We have made it into the double digits. And that was exciting. Uh, we stayed, I think, five days. I got there Thursday night and then we left like Tuesday afternoon. How many days is that? Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then like half of Tuesday and like not really Thursday because I got in really late. I think I got to bed by like 11 30 p.m. um after I like actually made it to the hotel. So yeah like five-ish days. Great trip and the following weekend I had Jacqueline's Bachelorette in Vegas and so instead of like flying all the way back to Orlando just to fly back to Vegas I actually went home with my mom to my family's house in Oregon and stayed there for two days in between So like I flew in, what was it, Tuesday? We got in late Wednesday night, or no, Tuesday night, sorry. And I spent Wednesday and Thursday just like resetting, doing laundry. I did a trail run and relaxing, basically doing nothing. And then Friday I flew to Vegas and then we had the bachelorette. I flew back to Orlando on Sunday. So that was like my wild extravaganza of three locations on this trip, kind of compacted into just over like what, a week and a half and uh which was nice because it overlapped with labor day so i didn't have to take off that one extra day for work but i did take off the entire time for work so that i can completely unplug and not take my laptop so that was great 
what a time. Um, I did sign up for a race while I was in Hawaii because, of course, we've got to stay on the dumpy training. I gave my whole schedule to my coach and, like, basically said, figure out what my running schedule is and, like, what my workouts are while I'm on vacation because we can't let up. All, at least I didn't want to. So I was, like, very committed and I was, like, down to, to stay on uh, my training schedule. So – I did end up doing some strength at the Alani gym. The Alani gym was so nice. Oh, my God. I just, like, followed a little upper body peloton class. I signed up for the Runner's High 20K race, which is, like, somewhere around, like, 12 miles or something. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, and I don't have a calculator in front of me. But it's, like, in that general area. Why they didn't just make it a half marathon, I don't know. But... Me and Ashley signed up for that and that was on Sunday morning and I really wanted to like commit to doing a long run while I was on vacation. So I was like, why not just sign up for a race so that way we can a medal out of it and you know, have fun. Oh my God, this race, dude. It was, (laughs) it was rough. Like two out of 10, don't recommend. Uh, It was put on by the local running store in Honolulu and People were nice and it was fine, Uh, but the location of the race was kind of near an elementary school slash like government bases. So like there was like naval base, FBI uh, buildings, kind of just like plain Jane buildings and it was four laps. It was a four lap, three mile loop um, four times. So that was rough. It ended up not even being a full 12 miles, which was kind of um, a letdown because like when you go, like I was like in my head prepared to, you know, conquer 12 and I didn't even like the Garmin didn't track 12. So, you know, if you know, you know, uh, but it started late, which is like fine. But the weather, oh my God, you would think that the Florida training would have like helped me in this situation. But it it didn't. Like, it was so rough. It was very hot. We started, like, after the sun came up, basically. It was, like, 6.30 a.m. And it was cool at the beginning, which was great. And then it started raining. And when I say rain, it's, like, the needle-pelting kind of rain. And it got chilly. And then it stopped raining. And then it got hot. And when I mean hot, I mean, like, floor hot. And... There wasn't shade on this trail because it was, again, it was going, lapping around through this, like, I don't, I don't know how else to describe it other than, like, a government area with just, like, plain buildings everywhere. There's no, like, trees. It's just, like, the road and these buildings. (laughs) And so we had direct sunlight into our eyeballs the entire time. So it was hot. It was sunny. It was pelty, rainy and boring like the the trail it was just laps and so that was really really mentally a struggle and then physically it was also rougher than I expected I've been training so hard I've like had done 12 miles regularly like weekly and in the Florida heat so I was like why is this feeling so difficult? I ended up walking a lot towards the end. And this has been like a common thing for me where training, I feel amazing. I feel like I can conquer the world. My splits make me happy. I like go through all my fuel. I I have a good time. And then race days come along and I feel like I just tank. Like it just, I don't know what it is. It's the opposite for normal people. Like people on race day usually have like adrenaline and are more uh motivated by like everyone around them basically and that just doesn't happen for me so I don't know that's like something I need to work on or something I want to work on at least and yeah but as far as the actual race itself I don't know what it was with like how everyone was training and like I get it it's it makes more sense to like stay on your on the course path to get um to help with not getting the extra miles of like weaving in and out which I understand it was not a crowded race however these all these elite runners felt the need 
to stay on their path so much that they would skim my shoulder because they couldn't be bothered to take one extra step around me. It was not crowded. And I went, like, I'm used to run Disney where it's like, that's more likely to happen because of just the lack of space, like physical space that people have to stand. And you might end up like kind of brushing someone by accident. But I'm talking a full road, a very wide length road with like one or two people <laughs> very spaced out and yet these runners still felt the need to like brush me which was really really annoying and weird and put me in a really bad headspace like why is everyone being rude and for the love of god please push me over so that you can have your extra second for your mile time thank you like please by all means your time is so much more important than me (laughs) like jesus christ but i just So it was just not a good experience. I had a horrible time. I felt awful. I ended up walking. I was like so just over it by the end. And of course they had their like medal ceremony before, like long before everyone even finished the race, which like, okay, we get it. You're fast. You're elite. You're freaking two minute miles. Good for you. But it was just so stuck up and snarky. And I'm like, this is such a turnoff for people trying to join the running community. And like, while I understand where a lot of people are at different training levels, like there's no need to make fe- people feel poorly about their level of training. And like, while I understand like they, they can't stand there all day if people take longer to finish a race, like I understand, but I don't know. It was just the air, like the morale, the vibe, the energy. It was negative negative after already having like a poor time with this stupid lapse in the sun and like I just it was not a good time so would not recommend (laughs) and it's it's no hate to like the club I guess but it was just my experience was not good it wasn't good so we still got like 11.7 miles or something which was all right we got the long run done cool got the medal slay did good okay so yeah I mean I that was just some backstory if you did see my post on the race (laughs) um but anyway moving on those were my like trip extravaganza and it took me so long to recover oh my god but moving into my lows Florida summer it's finally letting up a little bit it actually like I wore a sweater the other day like amazing and I know that for normal people that means it just dropped below like 85 degrees but (laughs) that's significant okay it's chilly out here now so that's good um a few this was like a month ago now oh my gosh but I had it noted down my coach had me do a mile time trial to see where I was at and it ended up being on one of the days that was it was really hot uh in the morning here and because this was like early August I think that I did this and I did my mile time trial. I, um, my instructions were to basically run as fast as you can without like passing out <laughs> and, or throwing up. And I had like, I think a warm up mile before that. And then it was time to like mile trial. And then I had like two more miles or it was like two or three more miles after that just to like build up endurance, I guess. And to also get a feel of like where I'm at for pushing for a mile. I was really disappointed with my time. I was the I was trying to get under 10 minutes and because I know that I've like run that before, but the, my thing is I can't hold it for a whole mile. Like I can run that in small increments, but I I can't hold it. And even with doing something like the Galloway method with uh intervals, I just walk so slow that it brings my time down. So like while I could run fast for like a short burst of time or like faster uh, (laughs) on a short burst of time, my walking will set me back because I just, in order for me to recover, like I need to walk the pace that I need to walk at. And it just, it sets me back. So my mile time trial ended up being like 10, 10, which is like, good I was disappointed by it though for myself and that was a little disheartening and I like had to 
ha- talk this out with my coach and with other people too that like okay there's many factors going into this it was a super hot morning I think I was like supposed to start my period like the next day too or whatever and so there were a bunch of different factors at play that like could affect why I didn't reach where I was like hoping to reach and we'll just do better next time so that was that I got sick in August I missed an entire week which felt like forever from training like entirely which was such a bummer and uh, that was like a few weeks before I left for my trip and then coming back from my trip I needed so much recovery like oh my god changing time zones 11 times and like the travel in between I am not 21 anymore (laughs) and it's like not that I'm old but my body sure feels old and it takes so much longer to recover nowadays so it's up until this point even like this day this second I'm still recovering on sleep and I don't know I must have a lot of like internalized like stress because all I've been doing is resting which takes me to my next low my knee injury so I mean I it's dramatic if I say I got injured uh no one's talking to you Siri um but so like I kind of got an knee injury but like not really (laughs) but like kind of so when I was in Oregon I noticed going up and down my parents steps like I don't have steps in my house so I don't do steps a lot but in their house coming down I noticed my my uh my knee my left knee would like pop and like I'm a very crackly person I was a dancer I crack everywhere say crack again uh but I like my hips just like I gotta do it daily like multiple times a day my toes crack and pop whenever I walk it's not an unnatural thing for me like it's very usual and regular and expected behavior of my body but this was a different kind of popping and so I I noticed it slightly happening in Oregon no pain involved I was running fine and like it would be okay but then it kind of progressed to like more consistent popping and like constant popping whenever I would bend my knee which got annoying and I like somewhat aggravated and so it ended up turning into pain and then it became it hurts to walk or run and so I've stayed off of it now for a week and it's been torture because all I've been wanting to do is get back to my like regular training schedule and like my routine coming back from these trips and then this happens and I I uh, suspect it's honestly due to like weak glute muscles and I have really weak hip flexors and one other thing I didn't consider which I will talk about in a little bit is my shoes so I don't know if maybe I just like tweaked it wrong when I did the trail run in Oregon it was nothing crazy I did five miles and I went through a couple of like the local trails near my house and not no like crazy incline no like branches and crap sticking out like it was like a fairly flat partly paved even trail and so like why would that throw me off I mean I get it I'm not running trails out in Florida but like that wasn't anything crazy so I'm kind of I'm just confused and then there was no like noticeable incident of like oh this tweaked my knee like there wasn't any of that so I don't know but it it progressed to like I would wake up and then both my knees would be radiating pain and it's like for what for why I have been doing nothing like resting maybe walking and I just like went to bed early and I've been elevating and icing my knees yet after resting my knees hurt like what is going on here and I think I truly I think I just have like weak glutes and then the sitting with the traveling in addition to maybe my shoes that I wore maybe in the co- a combination of it just like made my knee unhappy which is why I don't think it's necessarily an injury it's just like an ailment from overcompensating other areas and like weak muscles in other areas you know what I mean like I always look through the lens of it might not be the place that hurts it might be all these other factors that are actually having issues but that's just the symptom 
So <sighs> with the American healthcare system, it took me a week to get an appointment with my primary care doctor in order to then get a referral, which takes days, to then see an orthopedic specialist, which by the way, I'm still waiting on my referral. And my doctor said that the orthopedic person is going to want x-ray. So he ordered an x-ray as well. So that I can like go in with an x-ray. But I'm like, ah, truthfully, I don't think the x-ray is going to show anything. I think I'm like, I can problem solve this on my own, but like, I don't want to make it worse. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's a rough time. So I haven't been running and it's made me insane. I, I've been trying to rest up and sleep, but my bed is like feeling weird. And so I got a mattress pad to make it softer and like change it up. I think my body is just like changing, which is so weird, but like, it happens to people who like are running a lot. And so now I've been running, I mean, relatively consistently kind of <laughs> uh, for the past like year and a half now, my feet have changed. My body is changing. And with the consistent training that I've been doing for the past few months, I think my gait may have changed and my stride may have changed a little bit. My form, I mean, hopefully has improved a little bit, <laughs> but things are changing. I now wear bigger shoes. Like it's, it's wild, but I, it, it's, it adds up. I mean, that happens. I have really, really high arches in my feet and I've always been like a true seven and a half. Like that is my shoe size. And now I'm in a, so it's like, what? But I still, I got my feet scanned at Fit to Run and it still shows my feet being a true seven and a half, yet all my shoes need to be eights. So it's like, it's a weird thing happening. And I know that I think that's more common with people with higher arches because like, not that your foot like flattens, but like kind of, <laughs> I don't know the science behind it. So don't quote me, but yeah, I don't know. And I think just over time, my, my shoes may have been an issue with that. So yeah, I... Moving right along, uh, I will come back to the shoes in a second, but I wanted to also insert in a different topic. Upcoming races, there was a Run Disney race registration in, since my last episode. Springtime surprise here at Disney World. That's in, what, April? Um, I didn't register for anything because, holy crap, these prices are through the roof. Like, and it sucks because like you have to pay, you know, up front. And while it's good because then when race weekend comes around, it's like, oh, free, girl math. But, you know, when you're paying for it, <laughs> I did not have whatever it was, $500 in August to like shell out for these races that are in April. So I, and for now I'm skipping it. If registration opens up closer to, and I feel like signing up for a race, then I will, but I'm going to leave it up to fate. And while I love the themes, it's like the Stitch Ohana challenge, I think. And it's like up Peter Pan or like Tinkerbell. And Stitch is the challenge. And what's the other one? Uh, I don't remember the other one. But I love the themes and I love Stitch. So I'm, I was really tempted to sign up for the challenge which is the 5k, the 10k, and the 10 miler. But yeah, it just wasn't going to happen. Like I had so much stuff to pay for. I had my trips and I'm like, I need new shoes. And so there's just too much money going to like other things that are right now that I like just couldn't, I couldn't justify it. So we'll see. There's also wine and dine coming up. It is creeping up for every, all of those, uh, who are signed up for that race. I am not. I will be in California. So I won't even be here for that race weekend. I'm so sad. But that'll be a fun time. That is only like a month and a half away. That's crazy. I'm so excited for everyone. But I think it's also for the best that I'm not signed up because of this like knee quote unquote injury <laughs> that I'm dealing with. It's probably best that I don't have any like races for right now, which makes me sad. But rest is good. That's what I keep telling myself. It's better to rest now than to be forced to have to rest and rehab later if I like were to make it worse. So we don't want that. 
So those are the upcoming races. But the star topics of oops, I just like smacked the microphone. Uh, <laughs> the star topics of this episode that I like wanted to mention were shoe fitting and the controversy of the hydration vest while you're running the longer miles or not the longer miles even. But I just like had to get this off my chest. We like have to talk about it. So shoe fitting. I think I would say if you talk to any runner out there and if you run you're a runner like bottom line period point blank if you run you're a runner and if you ask any of the runners it's best to go get fitted for your running shoe this is very important to go to a reputable running store and if you kind of ask around to runners they could point you in the right direction I had first got fitted at the Roadrunners sports store. I don't know the full or Roadrunners. <laughs> uh, there was one in Oregon. That was when I was living there. That was the first time I got fitted. And what an experience it was. It really opened up my eyes and I learned a lot about myself and how a running shoe should fit and things to think about and things to watch out for. So that was really, really, really helpful. And I absolutely recommend to anyone who is interested in getting started in running or who hasn't been fitted recently to like, go do it because not only can it help you with your first pair of running shoes that you're wanting to commit to but going back and getting refitted after time has passed to see if anything's changed and to maybe try out something new can be just as valuable so I am thinking my beloved my beloved Hoka Gaviota 4s I think I think their era is done in my life, which is so sad because that's been my shoe for a, like a year and that's what I ran Dopey in and I had like four different pairs that I used, but they were all Hoka Gaviota 4s and I loved them. But here's the thing. When I first got fitted, this was before my body changed and my feet changed. So I, I for one, love a cushion issue. I do not want to feel the road like – Where's the floor? I don't care because I don't want to feel it. So I love cushion and I love support. And I thought I've always loved stability. And because, again, I have such, such high arches. Like I have the highest arches ever. And I've had like many scans to confirm this. (laughs) My footprint is literally just like the toes, the heel, a little line on the outside to connect them. That's my footprint. And my arch just doesn't touch the floor. It, It is what it is. And... I had custom inserts made at the Roadrunner store when I was first fitted and it was the kind where you like step on them and they literally form to your feet and so they've kept my scan on file and then whenever I would need new shoes or new inserts I would just order them online it was fantastic and great because I like became a member um, to like in order to do that but I think the combination of the super stability cushion shoe that is the Hoka Gaviota 4s combined with the very like customized orthopedic insert may have been overcompensating for the high arches and actually pushing my foot out more than it already was because in all of my like everyday sneakers and like my converse and whatever other shoe the wear down is always on like the outer heel and maybe even like the outer corners of like the fronts too but that's where I wear down my shoe so it's like the opposite of like I think it's what internal pronating or pronating don't quote me but I have the opposite issue and so I think in order to make up for my arches I was thinking I needed more cushion on the inside but that actually might have been pushing me out further which can cause IT band issues and that can cause strain on your other muscles and lo and behold, can cause knee problems. Ooh, that's crazy. Yeah, so I learned all this, actually. I mean, I was kind of thinking, like, I know I have weak glutes. Like, we need to just work on it. Like, I already made a list of, like, all my glute and knee mobility that, like, I need to incorporate and more often uh, because it's just wild because I sit at a desk. And other than like actually running and training like 
pretty sedentary and like while I do walk at the parks and visit those and do all that like I'm still sitting for a large portion of the work day essentially so yeah I think we're just the puzzle pieces are clicking the information was there but we we finally got there you know uh, but uh, I went I ended up going to track shack here in Orlando and I've always had a good experience there I think the um people who work there are very knowledgeable and very helpful and very nice and also very welcoming to new runners but will also talk it out with you if you're a more experienced runner and they they have a good sense of what's on the market and like based off of what you tell them they can give good recommendations at least in my experience so I actually went this past weekend and decided okay I think it's my shoes that are like causing problems because your running shoes are supposed to last between 300 to 500 miles that's a lot of miles and I ever since uh post dopey when I got my new shoes I've tracked all the miles on all my shoes in Strava and I try to be very exact and I only wear them for like things that are being tracked like my runs and I think the ones that were kind of starting to hurt me were the ones that I traveled with. And so I ended up wearing them and I I knew that they were kind of, I had been wearing them. I didn't like put together the number of miles that were on them, but I decided, okay, these are going to be my pair that I'm okay with traveling and like as in wearing on the plane, walking through the airport, walking to my destination, like getting a lot of extra miles on them outside of a tracked run. So I knew like this pair is going to have extra than is being tracked. I go to check the mileage on them, not even a hundred miles, not even a hundred miles. These are like $160 shoes and I'm barely getting a hundred miles out of them. Is that a joke? Is that a joke? Like, no. So I was kind of pissed off by that, but like, it is what it is. I've, I've been wearing them. It's not like I can like return them or anything, Uh, but I, it was just time to like, consider new shoes so I actually before I went to get refitted I had ordered the on cloud monsters because I've been seeing so many people happy with them and they are a very cushiony shoe like they're the most cushiony of the on brand and I love cushion and so I'm thinking maybe I'll branch out a little bit from the stability vibe and just kind of see what else is out there I had tried to do this before but I ended up coming back to my Hoka Gaviotas but I hadn't explored very far and so I hadn't really given other shoes a chance so I was like mentally like I, okay I'm ready to give other shoes a chance so I ordered the on cloud monsters and I ordered them in dopey colors because they came in purple and green and I was like ah! okay meant to be and I ordered them in an eight because I think I'm like a true eight in my running shoes now and I I did one run in them. I did a five mile run in them and I did like them, but I was also having my like knee ailments. And so I don't think I could give them a really fair shot because I was kind of just already in pain to begin with, like not caused by the shoe, but you know, so I think, I think I like them. I wanted to do a long run in them, but you know, rest came first. So I have yet to do a long run in them, but I I'm very excited for them. Because when I went and got my fitting done at Track Shack and talked this through with the guy, he was very, very helpful. And I explained to him I love cushion, but like this was my setup. And like I even brought in my shoes to like show him like where the wear gets like on my shoe, which can be helpful for him to understand like what I could be needing. And I I was very open. I was like, okay, I can stray away from Hoka. It's okay it's okay. That's what I tell myself. Um, Cause I've been so pro Hoka and I was ready to branch out. So he brought over the, there was an Asics. It was like a Cumulus or something. So one of the cloud names, <laughs> one of the Asics that was like mid tier cushion. And I was like, okay, this is good. This is chill. I, uh, he brought out the Brooks Glycerin cause these are, popular names that I had heard of that people liked and so I wanted to just 
gave each one a try and see how I felt about it. The Brooks Glycerin, comfy, but he brought out the Asics Nimbus and holy Toledo. Putting the Brooks Glycerin next to the Asics Nimbus, it's just a no-brainer. The Asics Nimbus, it is so cushiony and bouncy and wonderful and magnificent. It was just like, I'm in love. Like, it's it's a yes from me. So I, I did a couple of strides in the store <laughs> and I fell in love with the Asics Nimbus. So that's what I brought home and such a fun color too. Like, I am just in shock that that's what I ended up going with. But Asics are known for doing like crazy wild colors. So I was really excited so that they had one of those in stock. But I was also unsure if I got the right size in my on cloud monsters because it's not that they're the length was short, but it was the top of the shoe was a little bit more shallow than I'm used to. So it was kind of like touching my toes a little bit. And so it made me think like, are these too small? But I mean, they felt okay on my run. <laughs> and I ended up talking it out with the guy at the store. He brought out the on cloud monsters in the size that I, I already owned, as well as like the half size up to kind of compare. And he thinks I got the right size and the on cloud monsters should like loosen up a little bit more as I run in them to give me that extra feel of comfort, I guess. Uh, but he thinks, he thinks I got the right size. So he like had me do the shoe fitting and everything and he was checking it as we went and it was, it was a good visit. So I also got some new toe socks because if you don't know, I am prone to getting blisters all over my toes, like no matter what in any shoe, like even when not running. <laughs> so they had, I have to look up the brand, but I put them on and oh my God, the material was incredible. It's like the only brand of toe socks that like running stores carry. So, I mean, there's like only one, <laughs> but I ended up picking up a pair. They had a deal, like buy three, get one free. And so I was like, yes. So very successful visit. I have yet to run in the Asics Nimbus yet to give them a shot. But when I return, I got new shoes waiting for me. I'm so excited. I can't wait to long run again. And ugh, mentally, it's just been really hard to take rest because I just like, I want to get out there. And I feel like I am also falling behind in a sense and like I'm losing all my base training, which like I can catch up and like I'll get back to it. It's just so frustrating to be a sitting duck. Like I, I could be walking the miles and that would like still give me benefits. But the problem with like my problem area of my knee <laughs> is that any bending of any kind makes it unhappy. So walking hurts. Isn't that great? Isn't that the best? I can't even Peloton because you know what you have to do? Bend. So I haven't even been doing like strength exercise. Like I could be doing like upper body and abs, which I'm like ready to start doing now. But I, I took like full rest. Like I've taken many days to also sleep, make sure I'm getting good sleep, make sure I'm eating like balanced meals and like nursing myself back to health because my body has just like not recovered from traveling. <laughs> like, which is so frustrating because I was a huge traveler and in pre-COVID times, like I could travel no problem. Like, I was also a few years younger, but you know, so that's just the rough reality of growing older, <laughs> but also like, why am I not getting good sleep? So there's just so many different factors happening. Anyway, that was just my little pity party moment there, but it's fine. It'll be fine. I've been distracting myself by planning my marathon outfit and watching a bunch of runner TikToks and just trying to fill the void a little bit. And uh, me going to Track Shack was a great thing because I, I went just to feel something. I wasn't necessarily going to buy like shoes, but you know, it made me really happy and I'm really excited to try the ASICs. So thrilled. But that brings me to my next point is a hydration vest. So I think I'm pretty committed into wearing a hydration vest for the marathon and that's almost like a controversial take. <laughs> like I've had a bunch of people be like, really? You're going to wear a vest for the marathon? Like, 
that's like added weight and all this stuff and blah 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 but I'm like girl I'm not finishing the marathon in like two hours like we're not setting world records here I'm gonna be out there for a while like slow runners means more time on your feet means more time on the course which means more fuel needed more water needed like I don't know I it it kind of just triggered me because I've been seeing on a bunch of TikToks the how angry it makes people when other runners <laughs> wear hydration vests. It's like y'all not drink water or something? Like what what do you mean? Why are you mad that people want to take water with them? I'm confused. I I don't get it. I don't know. Like if it helps you wear it, if it doesn't, don't what a concept like what a concept people always kind of uh well I shouldn't completely generalize like that but I've seen a lot of people say you don't need a vest for a 5k and like you don't need this and you don't need this and like okay first off no one was asking for your opinion it's that whole I've also been seeing TikToks on this of that what about me like epidemic of a video, like, for example, a video of beans you would pop up and a bunch of comments would be like, well, what if I don't like beans? Or like, what if I can't have this ingredient? It's like, okay, then it's not for you. <laughs> like, relax. Just scroll. Like, you're going to be okay. So I am pro hydration vest. Like, I love to be overprepared just in life for anything, even things outside of running. I like to have all my things with me. I like to be in control. Like I'm a huge control freak. I'm very type A and I like to be ready. And it's also a big reason of like why I drive myself to places. Like I like to have an exit plan. I like to be able to leave when I want to leave and not have anyone standing in the way of that. So that's one thing. On my long runs, I wear a freaking vest and I take all my fuel and it holds my phone and it holds my water. I like water, okay? I like water. <laughs> I love a good cold chili sip every few steps. You know, okay, not that often maybe, but you know, to drink enough water like throughout my run. If I'm doing like a 12 mile run, let's say like I fill her up. I have, um, I mean, I actually maybe I don't fill it all the way, but I have I think it's like a one and a half liter Camelback insulated bag. Um, it should be linked on my Amazon storefront, I think. But I put that in the back of my vest. And then I also, I have the Solomon vest. So it came with the two front flasks. I will use one of the flasks and put like a Martin 160 electrolyte carb drink in it and mix it with like a liquid IV to drink in the beginning of my run so that I'm like ready to rumble I don't use a second flask, um, but I probably will when we get like higher than 15 miles probably because I I like water. Why people get hate for that, I don't know. <laughs> like, go away. Anyways, I just don't understand it. But anyway, as I was planning my marathon outfit, I was thinking of what vest I want to wear. And I have like just a plain black one that I train in and I really love it. But I was kind of thinking aesthetically what do I want my outfit for the marathon to be like yes it needs to be very practical so I've also been kind of researching what I want to like choose as my articles of clothing uh so I'm still still brainstorming but I did order a fun like colored uh vest that kind of is the vibe of like the metal colors so it's kind of cool I got it on sale and I'm really excited because I think I might want to put like patches on it or like paint something on the back and just like make it all personalized and cute so that it's just like a fun race day thing and it's just fun like for fun so I'm really excited about that uh to be continued but wrapping up this episode let's do our final segment by the numbers we've got countdowns for the upcoming run disney races that I'm registered for so sorry I went in there and it's not on here but for Dopey, January 3rd, that is three months and eight days away. <laughs> like we're less than 100 days away. That is giving me heartburn a little bit, making me a little, uh, little, little nauseous. 
Uh, I have a little countdown now that I can start using because it only has two spaces, so I can put it at 99. That's stressful. <laughs> uh, countdown to Dumbo in Disneyland, January 11th. That is three months and 16 days away. There was some controversy on like when I started my countdown. Do I include the expo day? Yes. What kind of question is that? That is when the weekend starts. Like if it was just one race and it wasn't like a whole event, like how Run Disney does a whole weekend event essentially, then I would count it down to like the actual start time of the one race. But since it's not, my weekend starts at the expo. Like you pick up your bib, you, the experience starts, like you're there, the weekend starts, you know? <laughs> so that's why I count down to the expo day because it's just it's part of the event, it's part of the experience. Princess weekend, February 22nd, that is four months and 27 days away. And I'm not currently signed up for springtime surprise. So don't have a countdown for that one, but you still got time for that. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't really have a pace update for you. I'm still in that like 12 to 13 minute range on my easy runs. And I don't know. I'm okay with that. Like I am trying to get in that 11 12 moment because that's where I want to be for the marathon but you know we shall see the training the upcoming training once I get back to it will hopefully get me there but total mileage as of now I don't have one because I didn't run all week and it's it has me dying inside a little bit a little bit so no update there um I mean, I guess I could do mileage before that, but that is effort that I'm not doing right now. Uh, <laughs> I do post everything on Strava, so my Strava's just been like dead the past week. <laughs> Sad. But anyways, um, hopefully I don't take as long to record another episode, but dumpy training progress will be continued, so make sure you follow along. But thank you so much for tuning in and get moving.